okay? Freely given, deliberately lost, graciously restored. God was angry, furious, disappointed, and displeased. He had lovingly spent time and energy in creating this masterpiece. The question is asked, why was he in this state? Walk with me this morning as we investigate and discover the reason for God's frustration. Being the express definition of love, although he had created other beings and other worlds in the universe, he still had more love to go around because God is love. So he made a perfect earth with the intention that it would be inhabited. When it was ready to accommodate human beings, he knelt down on the ground and he formed from the dust a man. And then he breathed into that first man the breath of life and man became a living I just thought I'd preach a regular Adventist message this morning. Is that all right? Yes. We are known as people of the word, so I want to stick with it this morning. After he had finished making the first... Walk with me this morning. After he had finished making the first man, he took a bone from that man and he built a woman. And then he brought them together and they were... Married. We still believe in heterosexual marriage. Am I right here? A man and a woman because it was so from creation. There were two things that we got at the week of creation. One was the... And the other was... Marriage. God, and, uh, God brought those into being. So he built this woman. They were given freedom of... They were given freedom of choice. Why is that so? Because a loving God will only accept love that is freely given. Because love that is coerced is not love. If I have to force my wife to love me, we have no relationship. It has to come to me freely. You know the story. They were told not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of Talk to me this morning. We're going through this Bible. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Though they could see, they desired to be blind. What? Hmm. Satan, playing the ventriloquist, using the serpent as his medium, says to Eve, and we see what he suggests to her in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 5. I hope you brought your Bibles with you this morning. If you have, pick it up and wave it. Amen? Can't see those Bibles. We want to give the devil a headache this morning. So just wave it. Amen? There you go. We pick up the conversation, that the, 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 the statement that the devil made to Eve in Genesis 3 and verse 15. Read it together with me. I know that we're a church of the Bible, all right? We're not like the family radio people who said something that the Bible didn't say because no man knows the day nor the hour. We knew that all along. So we knew that Jesus wasn't coming on the 21st of May. Or some of you didn't know that. Okay, we knew that, all right? So here we go. Walk with me now. It says, For, for God know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be, and ye shall, as, knowing what? Good and evil. Stephen Covey, in the author of the book, Seven Habits of highly effective people dissected the word responsibility. What word? Responsibility. responsibility. He called it responsibility. You with me? Yes. Responsibility. And he goes on to define it as the, the ability to choose your response. What is it? The ability to choose your response. Furthermore, he says, when there is a stimulus, 
Something is reaching the senses. You know your senses, right? Hearing, seeing, tasting, smelling. When they stimulus, when there's a stimulus, before a response occurs, we have the opportunity to experience self-awareness. Experience what? Self-awareness. Self Exercise imagination, conscience, and independent will. We do not act from instincts because we are not the lower form of creation. We were, create, we, were, we were created in the image of God with conscience, reasoning, and judgment, which a dog doesn't have. I don't care how much they train animals. They haven't got conscience, reasoning, or judgment. We alone have that. So we do not act from instincts. We are, we are beings who are rational creatures. Humans have the ability to receive data. Receive what? data, process that data, compare it with stored information, make a decision, and then act on that decision. Are you walking with me this morning? That's what we humans do. And this entire process takes place in less than a second. That beats a supercomputer any day. Now let's get back to Eve. Data received. What? Data received. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now Eve, you need to process that data. And this is how she's processing, processing it. I was made in the image of God. So I am like him. Yes? Everything God made is good. Besides, after he made me, he said everything was very, but what is evil? Hmm. Compare data with stored information, Eve. So let's see how she does this. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29 says, Deuteronomy 29 verse 29, and it says this, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever and ever that we may do all the words of this law. So she don't know what evil is, but secret things belong unto God. Make a decision now, Eve, make a decision. If God wanted me to know evil, he would have revealed it to me. Now, Eve, you need to act now. You need to act. You know what? I better leave this thing alone. Eve should have followed her mind. However, she wanted to see. But see what? It must have been evil because she knew what good was. Yes? Walk with me, church. But they were not ready for the knowledge of evil yet. I came across a quote in the, uh, taken from the Australian Union Conference and that was penned on the 1st of March, 1904. This was written by an inspired Christian author and she states this. If Adam and Eve had never touched the forbidden tree, the Lord would have imparted to them knowledge. Knowledge upon which rested no curse of sin. Knowledge that would have brought them everlasting joy. According to Ellen G. White, Manuscript 67, written in 1898, she says this, Their education under the teacher of lies began in order that they might have the knowledge which God had refused them. What knowledge you might be asking that God had refused the first couple? The knowledge to know the consequences of transgression. It was not God's intention for our first parents, neither for us, to know what transgression, the consequences of transgression is, or are for that matter. That is what Satan did not make clear. 
But Eve wanted to see anyhow. Say it with me. Eve wanted to what? See anyhow. Now let's look at Genesis 3 and verse 6. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. Genesis chapter 3. You have your Bibles, right? Genesis 3 and verse 6 and it says this. And when the woman what? Saw that the tree was good for food and pleasant to the and a tree desired to make one she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and what so man we have no excuse because we were right there if anybody should have stopped Eve it should have been who man so nobody is, is immune to this Adam was an, an accomplice to the crime too so both of them got us in this mess that we're in right now. I wish I had a church that could listen to me this morning. It's going to be Women's Day soon, right? That was for the women right there. That, that teaches me. <laughs> and, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did what? And the eyes of them were what? At this instant, they were blinded by sin. Once they could see, now they're blinded by sin. They realized that they were naked. Hmm. Then they experienced something that they had never experienced before in their lives. I don't know how long they were living, but for how long they were living. They had never experienced this thing that happened in their lives. They experienced shame. Interesting. Now why are they experiencing shame? They realized that they were naked. Now, now the question must be asked. Were they not naked from the day that they were created? So how all of a sudden now they're ashamed of the nakedness? Does that make sense? Doesn't make sense at all. Let's look at it. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. Genesis 2 verse 24. I just want to make sure that you all know that what I'm saying here came from the Bible. What does that say? Genesis 2 24 says this. I'm going to slow down too. When I get excited, I go too fast and I don't want to lose you. Amen? Here we go. And they were what? Both naked, the man and his. And they were what? So how comes they're ashamed right now? Review and Herald, the 17th of March, 1904. Check out this quotation right here. But when they listened to the voice of the tempter and sinned against God, the light of the garments of heavenly innocence departed from them. Oh, that's why they are ashamed now. The light of the garments of heavenly innocence departed from them to conceal their nakedness. They sewed fig leaves together and made garments to cover themselves. And we have been covering up ever since. I know now it's the summertime and sometimes some people don't want to cover up. And you're walking down the street and God forbid you take public transportation and going up the steps you see folks going like this when they're going up the steps. Yes. Because they're wearing the low rider jeans and it's low riding. <laughs> you understand? And you want to say, you want to get a fig leaf and say, use this to cover it up? <laughs> oh, oh, church, oh, church. Oh, man. <laughs> Let us make man in your image. 
oh no, that's not there, that's not in the Bible. We've got to stick with the Bible. Mm -hmm. And God said, let us make man in our Who is the hour? The Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our own image. Make them upright. Make them with morals. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness. I found another text. Check this out. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 16. You know where that, 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 that book is? New Testament. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 16. Look at this text. You're going to see something, something here. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 16. Have you got it? It says this. Who only hath what? Immortality. Dwelling in what? The light which no man could approach unto. Adam Clark, commenting on this verse, speaks of God as, and I quote, inhabiting unapproachable light. Such is the excessive glory of God that neither angel nor man can approach it. Someone says that when the angels go into God's presence, they have to what? Veil their faces. Cherubim hold, hold up one of the wings while they're there. And the seraphims, they, they fly with two and two cover the feet and they have the other two. Cover the faces. Why? Because of, of the glory of God and the light that is emanating from him. Watch this. When Moses received the two tablets of stone with the Ten Commandments inscribed on them, unawares to him, Moses, while he was communing with God, God's glory was rubbed off on Moses. Huh? You're, you're serious about this? Let's check it out. Exodus, which book? Exodus. Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34. Which book? Which chapter? Which verse? Oh, of course, I can tell you that. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. Verse 30, y'all, verse 30. Exodus chapter 34 and verse 30. And it says right here. You got it? Here we go. And when who? And all the children of? So who? Behold, Mira, look, they said, the skin of his face, what? And they were what? To what? Because the glory of God was being reflected off of Moses' face to the children of Israel. And when they looked at Moses, they looked at the prophet who was standing in the place of God. And they were afraid of him because they were afraid of God too. Wow. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Check out something else that I found. Check out something else. Lucifer. Who? Lucifer. Lucifer, this word, his name, is translated from the Hebrew Hillel. H-E-L-E-L. -E -L. I hope I pronounced it right. I don't know Hebrew, but that's where the word came from. Hillel, which means shining one. What does it mean? Shining, shining one. In other places, it is also translated as, as morning star. He had this name because he was a, a covering cherub, that's Lucifer, always in the presence of God. Now the morning star is which planet? Venus. Who said Venus? Who said Venus? Oh, nobody said Venus? Put your hand up. You get, you get an A. Yeah, there we go. So, so, so it's, it's from the planet Venus. Now when you look in the sky and you see Venus, it looks like a star shining brightly. But it hasn't got light of its own. It's getting the light from the sun and it's reflecting it to us. It was the same thing that Lucifer did. He received the light from God and he was reflecting it to the angels that he was communing with. Some people call him the light bearer because he would take the message from God and bring it around to the rest of the angels. Why in the world do you think a third of the angels fell from heaven? Because of the light that he had and, and, and the authority that he had, some of them fell prey to his deceptions. Light bearer, no light of his own, but the glory of God was reflected on him and he brought it around to the rest of the angels. Hmm. Glory of God 
light. So Adam and Eve, made in the image of God, was, were, were, were enshrouded with his glory. They were covered with light as a garment. Wow. That's what they had going for them. <coughs> Excuse me. Even when they were not in God's presence, they were walking in the light. Beautiful light. This is amazing. But when they sin, they flicked the switch and the light went out. Listen to this. Here we go, here we go. When they sin, they flicked the switch, the light went out. And they tried to use fig leaves to make up for the deficit. I came across another quote. I'm sorry for giving you all these quotations, but I thought they were meaningful. Check out this quote. When we take into our hands the management of things with which we have to do and depend upon our own wisdom for success, we are taking a burden which God has not given us and are trying to bear it without his aid. We're taking upon ourselves the responsibility that belongs to God. There's some things that God can do and will do and some things that we can't do. Don't mix up the responsibilities, folks. Fig leaves just won't do. Man cannot, excuse me, man cannot work his way back to God. Man cannot what? You better believe that. Man cannot work, and women, children, and everybody, we're talking about, talking about mankind right there. Mankind cannot work their, his or her way back to God. Mortal man does not possess the capacity to reconcile himself to a divine being. If we could, we wouldn't need Jesus. We cannot make ourselves right even if we have a billion years to practice it. You try it. Try to make yourself right. Say, get, get up this morning and say, you know, I'm going to do this thing right this morning and see how much rightness you do. I know the sentence is kind of skewed, but you understand what I'm talking about. No, no, no. Fig leaves will not do. So God demonstrates a microcosm of Calvary. A what? Microcosm of Calvary. He, God himself, sacrifices a spotless animal. Why? Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So he sacrifices the animal, sheds the blood to fulfill the law so that Adam and Eve would not be dead at that instant and grace there comes along and their sins are expunged. What? Then he covers them with the skin of the animal that he has slaughtered. This skin, this covering, represents the righteousness of Christ. What? The righteousness of Christ. And they walk away from the incident justified. So they confess the sin, God covers them with a robe of righteousness, blood is spilled, they walk away as if nothing has ever happened, and as far as God knew, Adam and Eve never sinned. This is some serious stuff here. However, they have lost some things. I want to share about three of the things that they lost this morning. First, they lost life. What did they lose? Life. Amen. They lost life. When man sinned, he became mortal. He became what? Mortal. mortal. That means he can die. Don't let anybody fool you this morning. When you sin, the breath or the spark of life goes back to God. The body, which is this thing right here, goes back to the ground and you cease to exist. If you die in Christ, when he comes back the second time, you will be resurrected. If you didn't die in Christ 
After the millennium, then you'll be resurrected to be killed again. And that will be final at that time. Y'all know that, right? Okay. <laughs> it was Job who asked the question, if you didn't believe it. Let's look at it. Job chapter, Job chapter uh, 4 and verse 17. Job chapter 4 and verse 17. Have you got it? Job chapter 4 and verse 17. And it says this. Shall what? Right there in the Bible. So if you had any doubts that you're mortal, you or I or mortal, Job said it right there. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Then the apostle Paul went ahead in the, in the same verse that we read earlier, 1 Timothy 6 verse 16, he says that only God alone has what? Talk to me folks. Only God alone has what? Immortality. And that is why the Bible says that he that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So if the Son is dwelling in me, because the Son is God, and the Son is immortal, and the Son is in me, guess what? We got life and immortality. But when I sever that relationship with him, it's done. So in order for me to get life, I have to be constantly joined to Jesus. So if I die now, I sleep and cease to exist till he comes. But because I died in him, I have life in him. And when he comes back the second time, he restores that life again. Wow. So if a loved one died, you don't have to worry if they're coming back to haunt the house. The only place they're going to haunt if they can haunt anything is in that grave right there. And they say when you die, you can't think, you can't hate, you can't do anything. So they can't even haunt the grave because they don't exist. Second thing, so they lost what? The first thing they lost was what? Life. Second, they lost their kingdom. What? Yes, they lost their kingdom. Watch it. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. What, what, what book? What chapter? Which verse? Exactly. Here we go right now. Here we go. Here we go. What does it say now? It says, let them have dominion over the, over the what? Fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the... Now, if they lost their kingdom, who do you think has it now? Come on, folks. Talk to me. If they lost the kingdom... Earth, who do you think have it now? Of course, the devil has it. Watch it if you didn't believe it. John chapter 12 and verse 31. John chapter 12 and verse 31. You got it? John 12 verse 31. Here we go, here we go. It says this. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the of this be what? Who do you think is the prince of this world? Exactly. When Adam and Eve sinned, he gave up his rights to the earth and gave it over to Satan. Let's look at another verse. 16. John chapter 16 and verse 11. John chapter 16 and verse 11. What does this one say? 16, 11. You got it? Of judgment because what? Of this Oh, so two texts now call him the prince of this world. You have any doubts in your mind that he runs this thing according only on the, 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 the parameters of which God will allow him to do so? Why do you think when he saw, when God said, you know what, have you seen Job, an upright man, you know, as, who, who, who loves good and is true evil? And Satan say, he only serves you because he has a hedge around him, but, but you take away that hedge and you see how much Job loves you. And God says, okay, that be the case. You know what? I'm going to take it away. The only thing you can do is kill him. Yeah. And he did everything except killed him. Oh, let's come back to this. Let's come back to this. Let's look at another text. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. Ephesians 2 verse 2. Ephesians 2 and verse 2. I'm almost done now, folks. It says this. Wherein, in times past, 
Ye, who do you think the ye is? You got the verse? You need to look at the verse. Wherein, in time past, ye, that's you and me, walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Speaking directly to us. He says, now, you, Brother Brooks, and, and, and Havertown Church, once upon a time, all of you all used to walk according to, 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 to Satan. Of course. Yes. But we met Jesus and we decided that we're not going to walk according to how he wants us to go. G um, um, the devil wants us to go anymore. We decided now, I want to follow Jesus. Yes. So, so we made a 180 and we're going in the opposite direction now. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the devil, so they lost life. They lost the kingdom. The devil has it now. And they lost another thing. The third thing they lost was their face-to-face -face relationship with God. Hmm. Face-to-face -face relationship? I, I want to tell you this morning, those of you who are anticipating marriage and those of you who are married, if you want to have a relationship, Facebook doesn't give you a good relationship. Because anybody could put a picture up there and say, this is like me, until you see them in public, you say, <laughs> <laughs> You understand? If you want to build a relationship, you've got to see them live and direct and in person. And then you can examine and see, is this woman actually built? <laughs> is this man, does this man have the right structure? You understand? Until you see them face to face, so they lost their face to face relationship with God. Is that true though? Let's check it out. Isaiah 59, Isaiah 59 and verse 2. Isaiah 59. Which book? Isaiah. Which chapter? Isaiah. And which verse? Two. Oh yes, we're walking together, folks. We're walking together. Here we go. Isaiah 59 and verse 20 says this. But your iniquities and my iniquities has what? Separated between you, that's you and me, and who? God. Your God. And your sins, that's your sins and my sins, have what? Oh, so they really didn't lose a face-to-face -face communication with him. Because it says, if any mankind right now see the face of God, guess what will happen? They will die. And that's why when Moses said, you know what, God, I want to see you. And God says, you can only see my back parts. And that's why you're good. Because you look directly in my face, you're going to be dead. Lost the face-to-face -face communication with him. That is why when, 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 when Adam and Eve heard the voice of God walking in the garden, that was really his presence. They ran and hid themselves because they could not have a face-to-face -face conversation with God anymore. They lost life. They lost the kingdom. They lost the face-to-face -face relationship with God. Imagine this. We have everything going for us. Just imagine this now. Because I know, you know, in this economy, man, you're lucky if you have one thing going for you. But just imagine this right now in your sanctified imagination. We have everything going for us. A spouse. A family. Property. Financial security. But just one. Teeny, weeny, teeny, teeny, weeny, weeny. Teeny, teeny, small, weeny, teeny, sin, or mistake, and we lose everything, everything going for us, and just one mistake, just, just one mistake, and everything is gone. I don't know if anybody experienced anything like that, and I hope you never. Adam and Eve must have been saying the same thing we are saying right now. If I had known then, what I know now, I would not have done it. And the truth to be told, all of us say that sentence at one point or another in our lives. If I had known then what I don't know, I wouldn't have done it. I would not forgive me. But now we are living with the results of that mistake. And every day I get up, I see the result of that mistake. But thank
Thank God. <laughs> Thank you. Thank God that is not the closing chapter of our lives. Freely given. Deliberately lost, Brother Lance. Graciously restored. Back to our memory, our, 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 our memory verse. Back to our scripture reading. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. I'm going to give you some hope and then I'm going to wrap up and sit down this morning. Genesis 3.15, have you got it? First book of the Bible. And I will put what? Enmity. That is hatred, you all. That's a strong word right there. When you say you hate something with a passion. I will put enmity between thee. Who is talking right here? As Brother Lance said, you know who was talking right here? God was actually talking right here. And he's talking to, to the devil right now. And I will put enmity between you devil and the woman and between her offspring and your offspring between uh, thy seed and her seed it shall bruise your head now if you meet in an accident and everything else in the body like gets damaged sometimes you can you know recover from that but imagine meeting in an accident and your whole head's gone Show me one person who have ever recovered from a, an accident with their head severed. Can't come back. And that is why it says, but the, the woman would bruise, bruise where, where, where is it, where is it, where is it? And it shall bruise thy head. That means a death blow would reach Satan and thou shalt blue, bruise his heel. So that means it would be a minor blow to the seed. You with me? Yes. The seed of the woman is... Walk with me. The seed of the woman is Jesus. The head belonged to the serpent, the devil, and the heel, or what took place at the heel, was what happened at Calvary. It took about 4,000 years from the cross, sorry, from the fall to the cross, but Jesus came through for us anyhow. What? Jesus what? Came through. Came through for us anyhow. You see, church of God, Recreation, restoration, and reconciliation begins and ends in Jesus. Yes. 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 Amen. Life was lost, but Jesus came to recreate it, y'all. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. <laughs> Excuse me. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says this. Look at that verse, y'all. Look at that verse. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says this. Therefore, if... And I read this from the New International Version. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new what? Creation. The old has gone. The new has come. Christ came to recreate. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 22 says this, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. The kingdom was what? Lost. But Jesus came to restore the kingdom. Let's look at this. John 18 and verse 36. John 18 and verse 36. Have you got it? Here we go. My, Jesus is speaking right now. My kingdom is not of this world. Oh. So now he confirms it. This kingdom or earth belongs to the devil right now. And he does things according to the limits that God places on him. My kingdom is not of this world. Now, the Father is a part of this salvation process also. And watch this. First, sorry, Colossians 1 and verse 13. Colossians 1 verse 13. This is going to blow your mind when you see this one. Colossians 1 and verse 13. Can you find myself? After Philippians, here we go. Colossians 1 and verse 13 and says what? <coughs> who hath, this is God, who hath delivered us from the power of? I don't know about you, but I want to be delivered from the power of darkness today. If you want to dwell in darkness, that's on you. But as for me and my house, I want to be delivered from the power of darkness. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated?
invited us into the kingdom of his dear son. Wow. So when I accept Jesus as my personal savior, God the Father makes it respons his responsibility to translate me into the kingdom of Jesus right now. But the kingdom isn't here yet. You're right. The physical kingdom isn't here as yet. But the kingdom of grace is here for all of us to enter. And only those who have entered into the kingdom of grace is worthy to enter into the kingdom of glory when Christ comes back the second time. Amen. Back to the verse. Translating us into the kingdom of his dear son. Thirdly, the God to man face to face relationship was lost but through Jesus we're reconciled back to God wow Jesus is doing everything for us right now it seems to me right brother Colossians 1 because when I say it to you you don't believe it so let me give it to you from the Bible Colossians 1 and verse 21 Colossians 1 21 and 22 Colossians 1 21 and 22 have you got it Let's look at what it says right here. Some eye-opening things right here. If you were blind before, once I was blind, but now I can see. <laughs> yes, here we go. Colossians 1, verses 21 and 22. Check it out. And you and me that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. So once upon a time we had wicked thoughts. I can't stand that, brother. Man, he think he's all that. I can't stand that sister. She think that she, 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 her shoes is made out of gold. Can't stand it. Wicked thoughts. You know, some people, they just like to think wickedness. They see you doing good and they just hate you because you're doing good. I can't understand it. So, so he says right here, and you, and you used to be like that, some of you. And you, and me, we, I used to do it too. And you, that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now, what? Yet now, he hath reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Thank God for Calvary. When I sin and confess those sins to God, I stand before him unblameable, unreprovable because of Jesus. Reconcile back to God and I'm closing. And I can hear Yolanda and Donnie McClurkin singing the song. I pray you'll be our eyes. And watch us where we go. And help us to be wise in times when we don't know. Let this be our prayer when we lose our way. Lead us to a place. Guide us with your grace. Give us faith so we will be saved. And I can hear that old hymn from way back in my ears. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face what will it be when in rapture, I'm talking about a real rapture this time, I behold him, Jesus Christ who died for me, while rejoicing in his presence, when I banish grief and pain. You have any pain this morning? Ever so often I wake up with some pains and I'm saying, man, I'm only going to be 48 in a few weeks and where are these pains coming from? When are banished grief and pain, when the crooked ways are straightened and the dark things shall be plain, face to face shall I behold him, far beyond the starry sky, beyond the galaxies that we see right now. Uh, we're talking about above the, the first heavens and the second heaven and the, and the, and the third heavens where God resides. Far beyond the starry sky, face to face in all his glory, I shall see him. And not another, personally. I shall see him because I accepted him. I shall see him. You shall see him if you allow him to be your personal savior before in your life. By and by. Freely given. Deliberately lost. Graciously restored. 
We were given life freely. But for some strange reason, we messed up. And it's deliberate too. When we sin, we can't blame anybody else for our sin but ourselves. The devil didn't make you do it. Your parents didn't make you do it. Your friends didn't make you do it. We deliberately sin whenever we sin. But thank God for Jesus. Amen. We can be graciously restored to him. My appeal this morning to you is this. It's not a long one because I kept up enough time already. If you have never known Jesus as your personal Savior, but you realize that He can restore life, He can recreate you into something that you're not right now, and you can be a part of a kingdom that you haven't got right now. Some of us, we live in row houses. Some of us live in mansions. Some of us, we're just trying to make it. But I'll tell you one thing. Let not your heart be troubled. Yes. You believe in God, believe also in me. Because in my Father's house are many mansions. I'm going to have a mansion. You're going to have a mansion. And if you have a mansion right now, you're going to have a better mansion then. Amen. Amen. And now you know this morning, but you haven't been walking with Jesus. And you realize that you have the privilege to be reconciled to him. To have face to face communion with him. And on top of that, to top it, when he comes back, you're going to have a mansion. Something that you might never have down here. Hmm. The appeal is for you this morning. Why don't you come? Pastor Mon Prefect is going to pray for you because we're going to make this prayer. And we believe in prayer. Power of prayer. Muslims believe in it. Come on, y'all. Yes. They pray five times a day at least. Exactly. And salvation only comes through Jesus. Last time I checked. So if anybody should believe in prayer, it has to be Christians. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, let me see your hand. <clears throat> don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. So I'm going to take it that everyone here is baptized, brother Lance. I don't know. If you're not baptized, that means that you really don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. <clears throat> Serious. Baptism is a prerequisite to come into the body of Christ. Oh yeah, it's an outward expression of what's happening inside. So if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior this morning, let me see your hands. I'm going to take it that everybody here knows Jesus as their personal Savior. My next appeal is this. You've been walking with Jesus, but you have made a mistake and fallen short. And every day that mistake is bothering you. Because you're saying, if I had known then what I know now, I wouldn't have done it. And now the consequences of that mistake is plaguing me up to this day. And you want a prayer of reassurance that God can restore you back to that relationship that you had with him before you fell in that mistake. Why don't you stand? I'm going to extend this. Why don't you stand? If you haven't made any mistakes that you, that you regret, you can keep sitting down. But if you have made mistakes and you regret it right now, you said, Lord, today, today, not on the day, because salvation is now. Salvation is now. I want you to forgive me of that mistake. And not only forgive me, I want you to restore to me that relationship. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. So that I can sleep at nights again. So that this thing will stop bothering me. And while you're standing, since you're standing, why not just make it a little further? Come forward so we can hold hands as we pray, as Pastor Mark Reef pray for us. Why don't you just come forward? Come forward. Nothing to be afraid of. You're serving God. 
God is the one who's in control right now. Because I'm going to be a part of this prayer. I'm going to be holding hands as Pastor Monk we pray. Because I want him to pray for the mistakes that I've made too. That God will wipe my slate clean. And from this day forward, give me the power not to do those things that I shouldn't be doing anymore. Reconcile me back to that relationship that I had before I met him. And Jesus promises that if we ask anything in his name, according to his will, it's not an if, but, or maybe. If it's according to his will, he's going to grant it. And that's what I believe this morning. And that's what I know is going to happen this morning. He's going to reconcile us to it.